Welcome back. When many World War II soldiers came home from the battlefield, they didn't get much fanfare. But now, over 65 years later, their stories of courage and valor are finally being told. I had the honor of sitting down with one of the true heroes of World War II, a humble man who quietly accomplished one of the greatest feats in military history. These are the hands that helped win World War II. They belong to George Kirchner, now 92 years old. 67 years ago, he was an Army lieutenant in the Tough as Nails 2nd Ranger Battalion. When I heard about Rangers and saw the Rangers, and I, I thought, that's for me. On June 6, 1944, D-Day, Kirchner headed across the choppy English Channel under the command of Lieutenant Colonel James Rudder. Their destination? Point to Hawk, a daunting cliff on the rugged coast of Normandy, France. At the top, big German guns that ranged 15 miles, capable of hitting Utah Beach to the west and Omaha Beach to the east. By the time his boots hit the sand, his two superior officers were dead. Lieutenant Kirchner was suddenly in command. I immediately headed for Colonel Rudder. I wanted to tell him that I was taking over the company. And he told me to get the hell down with my men and climb the cliff. But that cliff was 125 feet high and heavily defended. Well, I went back to where the men were. We started to go up the cliff, and we were brought under fire by a machine gun off to the left. And uh, I remember two men who were hit and I left them down at the bottom of the cliff, and I started to go up the cliffs. Despite ropes that were slippery from oily seawater, those powerful hands pulled Kirchner to the top. He headed for where the Germans' big guns were supposed to be, but they'd been moved. So we felt pretty disappointed when we got there and there weren't any guns. But the Rangers found those guns further inland and took them out with thermite grenades. And military historians say that was the key to the entire invasion. Well, this was critical because if we look back to our right here, we can see Utah Beach. The, the German guns could very clearly range Utah Beach from here. And back in this direction, in the other direction, is Omaha Beach. So these guns here on Point du Hoc would have been able to range either one of those beaches. And that's why the Allied planners felt it was absolutely critical that these guns be knocked out. But success had come at a heavy price. 225 rangers started up those cliffs, only 90 made it. I came on a, one of my men who was very seriously wounded. In fact, while we were there with him, he started to rise up and he collapsed and, and he, he died. For his heroics, George Kirchner won the Distinguished Service Cross. So I was surprised. I was surprised, I really was. Because I didn't think I did anything that I really. When the news hit home, Kirchner was the pride of his native Baltimore. Despite all his accolades, to this day, George Kirchner remains humble about the crucial role he played in D-Day. But he realizes just how important it was that his Rangers completed their mission. Oh, I think it was awfully important, very important. I knew nobody but the Rangers could have done what we did. George Kirchner told me that except for reunions, he doesn't think about that time of his life very often. Many of those memories are difficult. And he says that that was the last interview he will do. Amazing man. Now here at WXII 12, we're working to honor North Carolina World War II vets on our triad flight of honor. Our next flight of 100 veterans to Washington, D.C. takes off this coming Saturday morning at a PTI airport. The public's encouraged to come out to the airport around 8 o'clock Saturday night to welcome home those vets when their plane returns. Well, tomorrow will mark one week since a tornado caused significant damage in Surrey County, and the cleanup of the damage from high winds continues. Today, we spotted tree crews and power crews working to pick up the pieces. An EF1 tornado tore a path of destruction five miles long in the
Pilot Mountain and Ararat communities. High winds toppled a chimney into a home and knocked down numerous trees. Fortunately, no one was hurt. And about the last thing we need right now is another line of storms, mm -hmm. but Laney, that's what you're watching out on radar right now. Yeah, last week we had Monday, and then we had again Friday, mm -hmm. and then on Saturday, and now we're back to Monday with storms that are coming our way. Let's take a look at what's happening out to the west. Of course, it's warm. It's nice out there right now. Temps in the 80s this afternoon. Strong south breezes ahead of our front, and right now the activity is over Tennessee as well as Kentucky. And over the last 24 hours, see yesterday's damage mainly from Texas all the way up to Michigan, Wisconsin, as well as Illinois. Eight tornadoes reported. More than 100 reports of wind and more than 100 reports of large hail from that weather system. Now, it is moving to the east. Greatest threat for severe weather is over parts of Mississippi, Alabama, also up into Tennessee and Kentucky. But we're in that slight risk area, the mountains and foothills, as we go through the overnight hours. The watches right now are tornado watches that are lining up to our west over eastern Kentucky as well as Tennessee. No, we are not under any watches or warnings at this current time. The time frame for us... Overnight again, it looks like. Mountains and foothills, perhaps we'll see some as early as 9, 10 o'clock tonight. Most of it, though, after midnight through about 5 a.m. For the triad, it'll come a little later from 2 a.m. to 9.